welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to podcast episode number 176, Amy, three years later. Y'all, Amy is back on the podcast. Amy was my first client interview three years ago on Stop Over Drinking and Start Living. And I'm so excited for her to come back three years later and give us a huge update. We are going to link up all of Amy's interviews that we have had her on the podcast. She came on and did an interview with me um, when she was finishing up her coaching with me. Um, the first time, and then she came back a year later and gave us an update. And now two years after that, she is back with an even bigger update and y'all can learn from Amy. Amy, thank you so much. Welcome back to the podcast, Amy. I'm so excited to see you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Oh my gosh. So y'all, I don't, I'm going to package all of this up and send this out to, if you're on my email list, um, and we'll link up all of Amy's podcast episodes in the show notes. But Amy was one of my private clients back in 2019 Mm -hmm. and her and I worked together for eight short weeks. And I think this is true and correct me if I'm wrong. Were you the first interview I had on my podcast of one of my clients? I think so. God. Yeah. Yeah. So you are amazing. So Amy like totally transformed her life in a very short amount of time. And um, I had her on the podcast. The first episode was like right when she was wrapping up coaching with me. Mm -hmm. And because it was pretty remarkable, I'm like, you have to come on and tell people about this. And it was great. And then she said after she's like, you should have me come back a year later. And we had her back on the podcast a year later. And she gave us an update. And then now it's three years exactly later. And Amy just graduated from the life coach school with a certification in life coaching, which I remember bugging her, bugging you about that in the very beginning. Like as I was growing my business, I'm like, will you go? Like you can come work for me, go. And you're like, nah. Like you I didn't know, I, I, it was such a mental <laughs> block. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I could do yeah. that. And then yeah. you know, it just takes me that little extra bit of time. And then I really thought about it, really thought about it. And I'm like, wait, why not? And so yeah. I did, yeah. Love it. So why don't you, I kind of want to just go back in time a little bit and tell us what was happening for you in the spring of 2019. Like what was happening in your life? What was going on? Why did you reach out? So I had just gotten into this cycle of over drinking almost every night. And, you know, I could, you know, quote unquote, control it when, oh, I have to work the next day or, you know, I have to drive like, okay, so I wasn't doing it then. But Um, but for the most part, I was just over drinking and I felt completely out of control. And it was like, I I didn't know why I was doing it. I didn't know, you know, you'd wake up in the morning and I'd, I'd say to myself like, Oh, I'll never do that again. I absolutely want no alcohol tonight. And then come around three o'clock, it was like, okay, you start going through all the excuses like, Oh, well, you know, maybe just one glass of wine with dinner. And I knew that was never the case because that wasn't what was going to happen. It would end up being four or five. But um, so I was just, you know, not in a good place and couldn't make sense of it. And so, yeah, you popped up on a Facebook ad and I was like, oh my God, Facebook really does listen to you because (laughs) they know, they know. Actually, I don't even think I had spoken about it. I think it was more of a like, oh my God, I'm thinking about it. And now Facebook is showing me this. Wow. And uh, and so I clicked on it and I was very apprehensive because in my head, I had a dollar number. Like, okay, if it's over this amount, definitely mm-hmm. not doing it. Mm-hmm. And so we spoke, we did like this little consultation over the phone and you said the price. And I was like, nope, that's it. I'm out. Nope, not going to happen. And then again, I just, I went back and I was like, wait, thinking about the money I've spent on alcohol, thinking about how much brain space it takes up. And I'm like, you know what, this is for me, I need to do this. And of course, spoke to my husband about it. 
And he was like, if this is, and of course he didn't see any issue with my drinking. Like I was still fully mm-hmm. functioning. And, um, and so I talked to him about it and he was like, look, you, you know what you need to do. If you need to do it, just do it. And so I did. And it was just fantastic. Yeah. I remember that conversation. I was actually um, visiting my parents in Indiana and I was in their basement <laughs> and you had this call and I was like so fresh and like, you know, I wanted to like break through to you so bad. And I was just like, fuck, she's gonna, you know, she's upset. Like I could see or hear, I don't remember yeah. if I could, if we were on zoom or if it was just a phone call, I think it was just a phone call, yeah. but I could feel your, um, frustration. <laughs> yeah. It was like, price and I was just like, I'm not going to let that stop me. <laughs> and I like, I'm just like, I'm going to say this, like, I'm going to, I'm going to tell her like, this is important. And like, I went for it, you know? And then you sent your payment through like the next day and it surprised me. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like those are those moments where for me as a coach, it's just like, like, I'm glad I fought for you. You know, I'm glad I got over my own fear of like making you upset and yeah. reached out to you. Cause like, look at where you're, look at what you're doing now. I want to get know. into that in a second, but if you can imagine like besides the drinking thing in that part of your life, like how are you feeling? Like what was happening like outside of the drinking stuff for you at that point in your life? So a lot of it was, um, so I had, I had my son and he is, he'll be nine in July. Um, and it like, you know how they always say like nobody, nothing can prepare you for having a child, which is so true. Um, but like the trauma of birth, the trauma of having a newborn, the, you know, it was just, it was so life-changing for me that I didn't know how to cope and I didn't have any coping skills. My coping skills were too shut down. And this is all stuff that I've learned, you know, since. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I would shut down. Well, you can't shut down when you have an infant that you want Mm -hmm. to nurture and be Mm -hmm. a good parent with. And, and so, um, so, you know, he'd go to bed and I'd have a glass of wine and all of a sudden everything seemingly, I now know it's a false pleasure, but you know, seemingly things got better. You know, they were terrible the next day, but they were better, you know, quote unquote in the moment. Mm-hmm. So do you remember having like any postpartum depression or high levels of anxiety? Like you just were just like, I'm uncomfortable. Yes. I, I did not have any um, of those things that, that people get that are real and, you know, um, people struggle with. I did not have that. It was just the, just the having a child. And then, and, you know, me and my husband, we had a very active life beforehand and we would, your drinking was part of our, not day to day, but like, you know, we were kind of partying and going, hanging mm-hmm. out and having fun. And, and then all of a sudden that like stops. And I also think that it was maybe a sense of like having my old self back of being yes. able to like to drink and like, just, yeah, having that be a part of it as well. That was, that was how it was for me too. It was just like, I, I didn't want to be just a mom, mm. just a mom that stayed home with her kids, you know, or whatever, just like boring. I always thought like, for some reason, like if I don't, I don't keep my old sort of persona, the party girl, and I'm not interesting. I'm not like kind of being wild or like, I don't know interesting yeah right (laughs) that like that something was you know it's just very faint i remember feeling that way right and so i like try to hold on to that fun Mm -hmm. outgoing lively person that was kind of edgy you know and so like of course the wine and feeling like oh i just need my me time and to relax and stuff with the kids like just became pretty gross dangerous cycle Right. Yeah. And you get into the, when you don't have the tools, you get into the, the shame of it. And yeah. like, and like, and I wouldn't tell anybody about it. Like I had mentioned it to my husband a couple of times, but, um, and again, like, I don't, I never felt like I'm an alcoholic. I can't control this, but I did feel very out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So then what happened? So you signed up thankfully for the coaching. Yeah. And so, then like, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it was, um, it was just like, okay, well, I'm doing this. And when I, when I'm like, okay, I'm, in, I'm investing in this. And, mm-hmm. and so I just, I put my all into it. It was like, this comes first, this is happening. And, um, you know, I assumed I would lose weight with, mm-hmm. with not drinking, um, just, you know, less calories. And, and of course I was overeating 
after I drank, but I was also overeating to soothe any sort of uncomfortable feeling in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I got the, the package. I started reading through it and I just, it just clicked with me. It just, it made sense. And I don't want to say, I, I should say it resonated with me. Like mm-hmm. everything that you were talking about made very good sense to me. Nothing really clicked until a couple of weeks later when we were talking about the model, when I finally realized, oh, it's our thoughts. And you had said it a million times <laughs> yeah. but until, until I, it like it, you just have to wait for that moment of like, okay, now I actually get it. And now I can see yes. how I can start changing things up. Yeah. That sounds like kind of like you had a little breakthrough there, right? Oh. <laughs> I love those. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So like you did it, you applied, you, you know, you lost, I mean, how much did you lose 20 pounds in like a short amount of time? Oh yeah. The weight loss was like so significant, so quick for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up losing 56 total Jesus. Um, and have remained. And then what's funny though, is like in the last like two months or so I've put on five pounds and oh. yeah. And so I'm, I'm now sorting through the, like, you know, I would put on one or two and lose two or three, you know, mm-hmm. all, all of that. Um, and so now I'm at like a solid five pounds. So I'm like, okay, it's time to take it. I know what to do. Yep. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, I have the tools and I've had my moment of like my little freak out of like, Oh, this is all over for me. I'm going to put it all mm-hmm. back on. This is all going to happen again. And then I, I, I know how to interrupt that model and say, no, no, no. Okay. That's, that's not the case. I have the tools. I know what I need to do and I'm doing it. Good. Good. Yeah. So what happened? So like after eight weeks of coaching with me, you're like, okay, I got this. And you went on your, talk to me about the tools that you took with you, like what you found the most helpful and how you were able to like keep going and maintain. And you, I mean, you lost weight with me, but then you continue doing that, right? Like on your own. So tell me like, what was the most useful for you? Yep. So when I signed up, I think it was April of 19. And then um, I think I had lost the 56 by like, November or December. So Mm -hmm. it was, it was pretty quick. And what it just shows you like just how using these tools consistently, Mm -hmm. like absolutely get you to your goals. Mm -hmm. Uh, But so, yeah, I mean, the number one thing for me was managing my urges because Mm -hmm. they come on strong and they come on hard. I mean, I'm sure they do for everyone and Mm -hmm. they are unrelenting. And so just really learning how to like lean into those really hard and just say, Mm -hmm. you know, taking that moment of just saying like, okay, this is just an urge. Like, this is just a feeling I can, it's, I'm not going to die. I can live with this. Um, and, and, you know, in in the, the program that I was in with you, it was, you know, not snacking and, and understanding that, um, if you get hungry in that moment and you're having an urge, you can process an urge and then, you know, tell yourself you're not going to die. And, um, it's okay to be a little hungry and then listen to your body to, yeah. to eat when it's, yeah. when it's your body's time to eat and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but like learning that scale of, you know, from negative 10 to positive 10 mm-hmm. and you know, eating when you're at a negative two and stopping the stopping part. That was, that was another big thing. Stopping at a positive two, um, like all those, all those little things that I still use to this day. So it sounds like you really listen to your body a lot. Yes. Which I, again, I never did. I was so disconnected with my emotions, Mm -hmm. with my everything. And so to make that shift into, and, and I'm still learning, I'm like, I'm really still learning how to tap into listening to myself, um, Mm -hmm. and listening to my body. But, but yeah, uh, the, those, the cues that are like very much like alarms that go off, you know, those are the ones that I ignored before. And now I'm listening to, and I'm learning how to do it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a balance too. It's like, and it's not like you, you, you know, you, you think you've got it or you're getting a handle on it. Right. And then we have challenges that comes up in our life. Right. So like, obviously so much has happened in three years. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have these new tools, you're losing the weight. Oh, let's just talk about how much you reduced your alcohol content. Cause that's why you Um, came. So how much were you drinking when you came in? Like, do you think like how many drinks a week? Oh, how many drinks a week? Uh, So let's say I was drinking at least five nights a week and Mm -hmm. it was probably 
at least three, at the most six. Okay. Um, so that about five times a week. And then, and then um, I say the most six, but um, that was like on an average night, not a like, okay, we're going to a party night. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. different. Um, and that would, you know, that could be many more than that because it'd be many more hours in the the day or evening. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so do you think it would be like maybe like 25 to, or 20 to 35 drinks a week? Sure. Yeah, I absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, and then now I would say, I would say 90% of the time, I don't even think about alcohol during the week. Like it's just not mm-hmm. even a thing. Um, a lot of times I don't even make a drink plan because I'm like, well, I, I'm not going to be drinking. So I, I just won't. And so mm-hmm. that, that kind of is my drink plan of not having any. And then on weekends, um, sometimes I'll plan for something on Friday night. Um, and a lot of times if, if I have been drinking on a Friday night for like a couple weeks in a row, I'll stop myself and say, you know what? I don't need it this Friday night. So I'm going to actually plan to not have any. And so I won't. Um, and then Saturdays, um, I would say, yeah. So Saturdays I usually plan for two. Mm -hmm. And so I will say some, every once in a while, I will have more than two and Mm -hmm. I wake up the next day. Of course, I'm not feeling great. And instead of beating myself up, I'm able to journal about it and figure out what went wrong, what didn't go wrong, what went well, and, and just sort of plan my next step from there, Mm -hmm. from that place of understanding of curiosity, as opposed to shame and guilt. Yeah. I love that. So it sounds like you went like, I don't know, 90% reduction. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's remarkable. I like that you play around with it like that. You're like, you know, how can I, like, we don't have, like, just because you can, and it sounds like you don't over drink on the regular anymore. And like you've significantly cut down, but it's like they say, just like, just because it's weekend doesn't mean I have to. Right. Right. Just because it's Friday doesn't mean that I have like, can I have a Friday without drinking? And like, and, and for a lot of people, you know, they did the wine free weekend challenge and like, I heard, you know, from people like, I just don't even like that would be so foreign to me. Like that right. sounds crazy to not drink on the weekend. Right. And oh. it feels such a tug and like impossible. Then that's definitely something worth looking at. Don't you think? Totally. And that that's just the thing is that like, even I'm three years into this work and like I, those deep rooted stories still come back to me to say, no, it's the weekend you have to drink. Mm -hmm. you know, and like, and so taking the time to examine that and to, um, to not drink and then see what comes up and you can learn so much from that in the moment too. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So, you know, things were rolling around along, you refresh, you know, drop 50 plus pounds and feeling on top of the world, like life has changed, right? Like, I just love that transition and like, everything's magical and, you know, you've got this and then like what happened? Uh, 2020 happened. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. My son was, uh, was there with me full Mm -hmm. full time. Uh, My husband's job never changed. He was able to still go in and and do what he had to do, but I was Mm -hmm. not my, my job came to a screeching halt and that was it. I was home, home with him um, teaching like many of us were. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I just remember thinking, I am not letting a little coronavirus make me over drink and overeat again. Like this is not going to happen for me. And so I made a plan to, um, I was going to work out. I was going to maintain my workout, but downstairs in my basement, as opposed to, um, at the gym. Mm -hmm. And so I would do it. And some days it would be awful because, um, you know, first my son wanted to come down and and join me fine. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So that didn't work out. He got bored with that. So then he'd be upstairs and he'd, you know, be watching TV or just Mm -hmm. doing other things that, you know, I I knew he should be doing something else. So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I had my difficulties, but I had that thought of this is like COVID is just not going to, you know, get me down. So I, I really, I maintained absolutely everything 
during it. And I remember like, that's when people started talking about like, wow, people are like really over drinking, but it wasn't the problem then. Like in the beginning of 2020 it, or at the beginning of COVID, it was like, everyone's finding their relief in alcohol. And of course, like people with the tools and the understanding understand that, well, you know, that might not be the way we should be looking at it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then now all of a sudden I'm finding a, a, seeing a shift of people thinking like, wow, that maybe that wasn't such a great thing to, um, you know, try to, you know, stifle everything with alcohol because, yeah. 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 I mean, I think that's what people see in all the things, right? So like when we have big, um, unexpected events happen in our lives, like somebody dies, right? Or somebody loses a job or a divorce happens or something like that, right? Like pretty impactful in your life. And then people drink, right, to get through it. And they're like, yeah, it's just, I need to do this, right? Like they don't think about that they'll do it forever. Yeah. But when they come out of like that tragedy or that period of time and it feels like they're getting back more into their regular lives, whoops, now we're left with this thing, right? And like they recognize, uh, like, I notice I'm drinking more. I'm still, that habit has been formed. And now I'm like, still want that wine at four o'clock, right? And like, whenever I get upset, I want, it's like, they don't realize when they're in it that it's hard or that it's not the best solution. Cause we're just looking for the best and fastest way to relief, you yeah. know? So true. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So how did you handle though? Like your emotions and the shift and the change in your life during that time? Like, what did you do? What tools did you really call on? Um, so I, I would say that that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, and, um, I know now looking back, it sounds easy. Oh, I'm not going to let the little coronavirus get me. And then I'm sure. you know what I mean? like, you make it sound easy, but I really want to know, like, yeah. like the deep, like, how did you do that? Right. Yeah. Um, I went into my bedroom and cried a couple of times. <laughs> that was, that was big. That was good. So you let yourself be upset. Yes. Yes. Yep. Allowing my feelings. That is true. Yes. Um, and, um, what did I do? See, it's so hard to like think back and, um, let's see. Well, I, I made a routine and mm -hmm. I would, I would definitely stick with the, cause when you're home, you know, your, your refrigerator is at your beckoning call. Um, and, and everybody else is drinking and, so, and all the jokes about noon, wine at noon and all, you know, all that stuff. So number one, recognizing it, recognizing for what it, what it is, what it was, mm -hmm. um, really sticking to a food and drink plan. Um, understanding that like, I, I I'm better than, than any of that. Like I, I don't need that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, sticking with my plan of working out and then, and then being able to, to change with it. So when, um, when I would find that my son like couldn't stay on task when I was downstairs, well, I got to switch it up. So I'm going to get up earlier or mm -hmm. I'm going to do it during his lunch break mm -hmm. or, you know, so being flexible. And I like that. it's and like when, when you didn't let like the external things that shifted, prevent you like you still figured out you're like okay how can I make this work now how can I make this work now yeah yep. instead and of then, being rigid be like well I guess I can't work out because he won't he keeps right. interrupting me right totally yeah being flexible and um and also like getting outside with my son um and kind of incorporating activity into that you know which was good mm -hmm. for him which was good for me mm -hmm. so yeah and um and really again it's processing those those urges um that was that was also a big one so having a routine making a food and drink plan moving your body being flexible yes. right not letting circumstantial events changing stop you from doing it's like you were very committed to taking care of yourself a hundred percent yes yeah yeah love it what else happened so let's see. So I signed, I ended up signing up um, for certification to become a life coach um, in November of 2022. And um, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so I made that decision and that obviously has been incredible, but okay. So I, I 
go ahead and make the decision and make that first payment. Um, I'm ready to do everything. I've downloaded, I've printed all the paperwork mm-hmm. and all the workbooks and curriculum books. And, and then I ended up in the hospital for, mm-hmm. for nine days. I, um, it was, it was two, I, I ended up in the hospital the first time for five days, was home for less than two weeks and then was back in for four for the same reason. And I ended up having a diverticulitis in my duodenum. Mm. Um, which is fairly rare because it's normally found in the lower intestine. And this was like right underneath my stomach. And we didn't know what it was. That was the other scary part. It was just this pain. And, um, and so, um, so I ended up, I I couldn't eat anything for like a month. I was like on a liquid diet and, um, and yeah, it was, so I ended up losing a lot of weight. I think I lost like 15 pounds from that. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it was, it was a scary time. It was just like, here I am making this major life change to become a life coach. I'm going to be, you know, switching careers and like, it's, that's big news in itself. And then you end up in the hospital and I've lived a very healthy life in that I I've never had any medical issues. So to be thrown mm-hmm. in the hospital and that place in itself is just a, it can be a little traumatic. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I got out and, you know, finally, it was solved in that I was, they were able to do an endoscopy, um, and like clear out the diverticulum. And so they don't foresee it happening again. So knock on wood, I'm, I'm in the clear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it was just all those things coming at me at, at one time. And I ended up getting a lot of coaching myself, um, to get through it because I felt like I really was kind of traumatized from, that whole experience. Um, so getting coaching myself, that was, that was incredible. Um, and, and just kind of like sticking with the basics, you know, it's like, it all comes back to those tools that I learned from you from, you know, day one and, and just really, and then didn't you have to gain weight? Like, wasn't that part of it? Like, did you have to gain weight? Like that's huge for people with weight loss stuff, right? Like to intentionally plan to gain weight. Talk about that. Yeah. So, um, it was, it was kind of a, a weird feeling. And and what I just kept telling myself was, look, you're, all you're doing is the same thing. You're not changing anything. You don't need to add calories because you were so depleted of calories. So you're just going to eat and you're going to put on weight. And I, like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I thought I was too skinny, like looking at pictures or looking just in the mirror. I'm like, Ooh, I, I, I was at my goal weight and I want to be back at my goal weight. Mm-hmm. And uh, so so it, um, I love that though. Like just the, you're not, it's not like you have to go out. You're like thinking I have to go drink milkshakes or eat cheeseburgers and French fries to get you're like, you, you were able to recognize that before I had to eat at a liquid diet. That's the, that's how I needed to eat to be at the weight. Now I just need to go back and eat that way again. Right. Like for most people, they would be like, bring it all in give it to me. (laughs) Well, and I'll be honest, like those that that certainly came up and, um, and, and people would joke about it, like, Oh, great, you get to eat donuts. And those. Oh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, just I I was just went back to my regular eating habit. And yeah, yeah, and I struggled with it a little because, you know, it's just it's also it's everything is new when you're dealing with um, and then, and then you're worried, is it going to come back? And mm-hmm. oh, so, yeah. So I, I struggled, but I was definitely able to, to overcome it. Yeah. That's awesome. You're very resilient. Thank you. I love that word. Yeah. And I think now so much, like we, I keep saying this, it's like, we need to learn how to be resilient because our world is changing rapidly, right? Like, from 2020 we've had so much right so many like back to back big catastrophic type things happen in our world and we're now in another one right and it's like we have to learn how to how to take care of ourselves because the world is not going to change right we can take care of ourselves so we can help the world right and help people and like move through this stuff but like and i'm not saying we shouldn't like fight for human rights or women's rights or any of that stuff, right? Like we should do that so that we can make shifts and changes. But to think that things are going to get better or back to normal, I think is a a myth, right? And so I think you're a really good example of that is like when the challenges come in, 
we need to really go in on ourselves and really figure out how to take care of ourselves because we can't sustain this. We have to be resilient. Right. Right. Yeah. All of that. It's and true. so we need people like you <laughs> helping other people, right? Yeah. Well, thank you. And people like you who yeah. are showing people how to do that. Yeah. Yes. It's so fun. Like I love this so much because, you know, I just think back, like if I hadn't been willing to show up, right mm -hmm. and push you a little bit and make you see that think this could be possible you wouldn't have changed your life right and now going off to help other people but not to mention just the people that are around you already regardless of you being a life coach like you've influenced people yeah thank you and yeah. it's funny i i've heard more of that like wow that's uh, what's the word i'm trying to think of the word um influenced or uh inspired people yeah. people have said that to me and it's so like, wow, you're very inspiring. And I'm like, I am? Wow. Like, it's, that's so beautiful to be able to be inspiring to people. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want my listeners to know? Like, what do you want to tell them? I just, I don't know. You watched the rant video, right? I did. Yes, it was so good. <laughs> and so like, that's what I just want people to understand is like, this is possible, right? Like, Amy is not like a special unicorn. She no. said yes to herself and to what she really wanted in her life. And did you think that this would be what you're doing three years later? I had no idea. I, all I knew was that I was ready for a change, but I didn't know how, you know, like I'd been on diets before I had tried to cut back drinking and mm -hmm. I had done all that. So I didn't know if this was actually going to work, but I, but I, I almost put I mean, I believed that it would, I was hoping that it would, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, what do I want your listeners to know? I want them to like, take a chance on yourself. Really. It's really taking a chance on yourself because you're capable. And like you said, I'm not like this, I'm not a unicorn, you know, like mm -hmm. I, like I was an average human who, I had a job and just drank too much and was really able to change so many different facets of my life just from learning how to manage my urges for drinking. Yeah. So I many other things came out of it. Yes. Right. It's like you learn the tools in one area, like the drinking and it overflows into the rest of your life. Right. Yep. You can, you're now going to use the same tools to go start your coaching practice. Yes. Yep. Right. Like it's so fun to exercise and you're a runner and like all these races I see you do and stuff like it's the same stuff, right? We don't like to, ex we don't, I exercise and run all the time. Right. I still think negative thoughts about it when I go, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know what I mean? But like, I know how to overcome that using these tools, right? It's magical. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. else? What else? Um, I don't know. I just. What do you want to tell people that think that they can't be somebody who just drinks a couple drinks? Because that used to be you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I feel like taking back your power over the alcohol is like such a big thing. Like you feel just so out of control but like when you realize no you're responsible for your own emotions um things just shift and you're you're able to you know not indulge in another um i don't know it's just you know and i still i still do the work on it and mm -hmm. and i what i've realized is that the work is my life's work you know it's just it's what i'm always going to have to do and i don't i don't see it as like this negative thing, like, oh, I'm always working towards it. No, it's like this maintenance thing. It's, it's that thing that makes me a better person. So I enjoy doing it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't... Yeah. I mean, I think about it too. It's just like, when I think about how I've maintained, right? Yeah. Like I don't drink anymore, but I don't also like, I mean, sometimes I still overeat, right. And I work on that, but I'm always active. I'm always, you know, working through my mental stuff. I get good sleep, right? I journal, I plan my food, like all of these tools that I teach my clients, I use, yep. and that's why I've been able to maintain, right? right. And it's like, I, I know that this stuff works. It helps me connect with myself, connect with what I want. Um, 
helps me see things better and more clearly, helps me problem solve. And I don't think about it's it's not like something, oh, I have to do all that stuff to maintain. Yeah. It's like right. It's like it's just part of what you do. Like it makes right. you it's like I, I get to do this stuff. Like yeah. I feel like that was kind of why I went into life coaching is like I feel like I now have all of these secrets that I just mm -hmm. that worked for me. And I just want to share them with everybody because they're they're truly secrets that need to be out there. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Any final comments, inspiration you want to share? <laughs> I don't know. I just, um, it, it's like, you just, you don't know how it can change your life or really open up your life until you just dive, dive head first in and just say, I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't think people quite understand what is available if they choose to say yes to themselves. Right. And if they did, they would be lined up, right? Like all yeah. over the place to do it. And they are, but like more people would see the possibilities, right? Yeah. Um, so and, and now, and now I love putting myself in uncomfortable situations, which is like, it's so crazy to think, but like, you know, I just started playing volleyball. Like mm -hmm. I've never played volleyball in my life. I played it in high school because they made me. And now I'm like, putting myself on a court with people who have been playing for years who are really good and get really mad at you if you don't win. <laughs> and, um, and here I am, like, who, who do I think I am to show up to this and, and learn a new skill, you know? And what, and for me, it's, it's, you know, my, my son just started playing the violin mm -hmm. and I keep using my like volleyball experience with like, yeah, it's going to be hard. And, you know, but if you don't play, you know, you're, you, you miss every shot you don't take. So why don't I you just love it? You miss I every shot you don't take. Well, that is stolen. I think it might be from Wayne Gretzky, but you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll end on that. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank we'll you for having me. Wow. Thank you, Amy. Oh my gosh. I loved that. So much makes me want to cry this is why i do this work because i know that people like amy are out there waiting for me to invite you in to show you what is possible and i believe in all of you so much and i think that you should join my coaching programs because all of this is possible for you you can have results like amy a 90 percent reduction in what you're drinking 56 pounds of weight loss and maintenance and changing your career. Like all of that is possible. I don't care how old you are. I don't care where you're starting. You can do this. So sign up, get a ticket to stop over drinking and start living the conference. The link is in the show notes. And then you should join my six month coaching program. Or if you just want to get your application in for that, do that right now because we're kicking off the next round on June 1st. I love you all so much and I believe in you. Bye for now.